Okay, now another uh, miscellaneous uh, type of uh, transducers uh, is uh, the uh, piezoelectric uh, type of transducers. Uh, in fact, uh, today if you look at uh, in terms of numbers, the piezoelectric uh, transducers actually uh, are made in not millions, I think in uh, billions in different forms. Uh, you will learn why it is so. Uh, uh, even though they are made in billions, but majority of them are actually not used for transduction principles, but something else. Uh, first of all, if I take a material and uh, apply uh, a force, it could be compressive force or expansive force, it doesn't matter. Uh, the atoms and molecules inside are going to be compressed or expanded. And please remember atoms and molecules have charged elements. The uh, nucleus is uh, nucleus is positive charge, and the electrons going around are negative charge. They also move. So hence, there is movement of charge inside this when I apply a force, and uh, there would be an induced EMF. Uh, this is true for all materials. This induced EMF is normally proportional to uh, the force. Uh, in most materials, the uh, the, the uh, underlying characteristics is square law, uh, which means whether I put a compressive force or expansive force, the induced EMF is the same. Uh, this pro property is called electrostriction. On the other hand, there are certain materials. Um, which uh, when in the form of crystals uh, and possess what is known as anisotropic structure uh, they exhibit a phenomena called piezoelectric phenomena so naturally occurring uh, piezoelectric crystal is quartz so if we look at uh, uh, quartz let's assume i have uh, one crystal structure uh, we have the silicon atoms and the oxygen atoms uh, in a hexagon so this is o2 minus this is si plus uh, now when i apply force the silicon atom will move and the oxygen atom will move this way. So suddenly on this surface, I see there are two oxygen negative atoms and uh, the, this negative one has moved out. So I will have positive sir. And uh, if I reverse it, if I apply in this direction, then this becomes positive and this becomes negative. So piezoelectric, the charge generated is proportional to the force that we apply on this, right? This is uh, silicon dioxide or quartz. The, um, there are natural uh, materials, uh, for example, uh, tourmaline, um, uh, a semi-precious stone also exhibits uh, piezoelectricity uh, uh, but today most of the piezoelectric materials uh, is man-made in the sense they are not available uh, a, in nature so we have to actually uh, make them in a oven uh, by bringing compounds together and uh, heating them up uh, and so most of the piezoelectric materials are also known as piezo ceramics uh, 
the reason they are called piece of ceramics is that uh, the processing uh, of a ceramic, uh, all of you know, we have used the coffee cup, uh, the uh, ceramic uh, potteries, and uh, the piezo electric uh, uh, transducers uh, is the same. You sinter at a very high temperature, that's why they are called uh, piezo ceramics. Uh, for example, barium titanate. Rochelle salt, uh, these are uh, some examples of uh, uh, piezoelectric crystals. So if we uh, now have a piezoelectric crystal, uh, it's possible to use different modes to generate the charge. Please remember this is only generating charge, but the charge actually comes as a voltage because of the capacitance. So if I put uh, uh, metal here and I put another metal here, so there will be a capacitance here and uh, C equal to, uh, 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 sorry, the voltage V equal to Q by C. That's what I will get. Uh, so, the piezo ceramics can be used in uh, different modes. So, this is uh, one way I make a crystal, and this is the thickness. The thickness I apply force here, this is known as thickness expander mode, not very popular. Uh, then, it's also possible to put the crystal in the length form and apply the force here. So this is called length expansion mode. Um, it's also possible that we apply force on all sides. Uh, this is very useful if I uh, want to measure inside the liquid because once I put this crystal inside the liquid force will come all, all around the six phases. So we call this as volume expander mode because volume will either contract or expand. Uh, then it's also possible to use the apply the force on this corner. So then the crystal is going to shear. So this is called the thickness shear mode. Similarly, we can have length shear mode. I can apply the force here. So this will make it like this. Um, this is uh, length shear mode. Uh, and uh, the length shear mode is also called face shear mode. Uh, if I just put if I put all this, it's length shear mode. If I put only one point here, then it, we call it as a face shear mode. Uh, the piezoelectric crystals can be used uh, uh, in uh, uh, all these uh, things. Uh, you should understand uh, because it uh, depends upon the uh, crystal structure, the sensitivity will be. Uh, or in, uh, the uh, uh, will depend upon how we apply the force with respect to the crystal structure. Uh, for example, if I uh, look at uh, quartz, quartz will have sensitivity in the D11 mode. Of course, when I say D11, uh, it is also possible minus D11. So, and uh, it is uh, D14 plus or minus again and uh, uh, so this the, the only these two modes it uh, operates every other mode will be for example d10 d01 uh, it doesn't produce uh, the uh, piezoelectric so you when, when you are making the crystal and cut the crystal you should try to cut, cut either in the d11 or d14 mode if it is uh, quartz right um, the, uh, 
the uh, uh, if we look at uh, the applications of uh, piezoelectric crystal of course you can measure force uh, but there's only one problem let's look at uh, a crystal the crystal has a mass it has a compliance and uh, viscous uh, damping if it is in the air when it moves around so we can now say uh, this is uh, m uh, d square x by dt square plus d dx by dt plus ks equal to force this we have already seen uh, the equivalent circuit is l uh, r and uh, c right l is equivalent to mass r is uh, damping and uh, c is uh, 1 by ks right this we have seen already so now if i look at this crystal i have the mechanical equivalent uh, so this is l mechanical r mechanical c mechanical then i have the electrical capacitance and of course there will be a leakage resistance electrical leakage resistance right so this is the equivalent circuit so we see uh, that if i have a q generated here uh, again i have to modify this so q so the frequency response of uh, any piezoelectric crystal would be something like this. Okay. So at zero, I will not get anything. So the piezoelectric crystal do not work for uh, DC uh, quantities. So piezoelectric uh, transducers can be used as a displacement transducer, as a velocity transducer, as, as an accelerometer. Uh, as a pressure sensor all applications are there right uh, in fact long back uh, when uh, gramophone records uh, were uh, uh, in use uh, many of you may not know what is a gramophone record uh, that was the only source of uh, listening to music uh, in the previous era uh, where uh, the music is recorded on a plastic disc uh, like this on grooves on helical grooves and uh, you have to put a transducer to pick up the vibrations of the uh, groove uh, there, there were two uh, very popular transducers <coughs> one is called the magnetic pickup we will talk about magnetic pickup a little later when we talk about another miscellaneous transducer and uh, the other one is the ceramic pickup CPU doesn't stand for central processing unit, it's here ceramic pickup. In the ceramic pickup, uh, you have a long slender ceramic and uh, you have the needle uh, that goes on to this uh, groove. So as this vibrates, you get a voltage developed across this. So uh, this is actually a length expander mode, uh, very high sensitivity and uh, very very popular uh, in the yester years for uh, picking up ceramic uh, but today uh, the piezoelectric crystals have uh, uh, several applications and uh, uh, one of the applications is in generating constant frequency now if i look at this circuit this circuit has two resonant frequencies one is series resonance, another is parallel resonance. And uh, what is series resonance? 1 by square root of Lm uh, Cm, right? 2 pi. 
position L or C circuit. So the rational frequency is only decided by the LM and CM. And uh, hence I have. This. Now if I look at this, the inductance is a representation of the mass. The moment I make a crystal, the mass becomes constant. It doesn't change unless otherwise uh, I take material out of that. CM is the compliance of the crystal. The compliance uh, changes only when the temperature changes. So if I keep the temperature constant, I have the uh, 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 CM also kept constant, which means if I use this in an oscillator circuit, uh, the frequency will be pretty stable because neither LM nor CM uh, changes. So one uh, typical circuit I normally use is the uh, so this is the crystal uh, so if this is uh, normal TTL uh, I have to use uh, 4.7k uh, if it is uh, CMOS then I can use 47k right these are inverters uh, this circuit will oscillate uh, at exactly the crystal frequency which is given by this. So <clears throat> now you know uh, whether it is uh, your uh, laptop, your cell phone, uh, your clock, uh, everything uses what is known as a quartz oscillator. Uh, the name is actually a misnomer uh, uh, because the, the frequency of oscillations are uh, normally either very small or very large and quartz if I try to make uh, at these frequencies uh, will be unwieldy. Uh, for example all uh, all of you who have an electronic watch it uh, doesn't have to be either analog or digi or analog digi uh, you will see uh, at the bottom quartz watch right but it is not quartz it's a ceramic uh, piezo ceramic that is used inside and uh, 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 32.76 uh, 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 kilohertz is the crystal. I am not very sure about this. Uh, this is 2 power 14. You can calculate. Uh, kilohertz will be the uh, oscillating frequency. So I put this oscillator and uh, put divided by uh, 14. Uh, 7 times divided by 2, I get 1 hertz. So that is how your uh, wall clock, all electronic uh, watches uh, uh, actually work. So that is one reason why this is made in, as I said, in billions. The second is, of course, <coughs> the usage in uh, digital circuits uh, for timing. So uh, your uh, computers, they require a basic time. Maybe it could be 3.6 gigahertz or uh, whatever frequency that you are uh, uh, CPU says uh, is actually uh, made of the crystal oscillator. Uh, here, this is 0 0.01 microfarad. The uh, another usage is, um, you know, if I keep the crystal and I apply a force like this. Uh, then I get a voltage generator. I can adjust uh, the number of crystals like this. Let's say I put 10 crystals in series. Normally we don't put 10. Assume 10. Uh, each one uh, generates uh, even 100 volts. I will get 1000 volts here. So we can generate high voltage. So if I put this high voltage on a small air gap, I will get a flash out. Of course, now you understand. Right? So <clears throat> you would have used this uh, as a gas lighter, uh, gas stove lighter. Uh, the uh, basic principle is uh, the piezoelectric uh, voltage. So we really generate about 2, 2.5 kilovolts. 
but for a very small duration and uh, create this spark which lights the gas. So another uh, example uh, of mass production and uh, being used uh, uh, in uh, billions of applications uh, is the uh, uh, gas lighting. Now, when we talk about uh, the uh, uh, crystal itself, uh, there are several uh, coefficients that, uh, oh, when I do this, when I connect them in series or doesn't matter in form, uh, this is called by mark. When we talk about uh, the crystals, uh, we talk about the uh, different uh, coefficients. Uh, the first coefficient uh, that determines the characteristics of uh, uh, the piezoelectric uh, crystal is the d coefficient right uh, in fact i talked about the d coefficient when it said uh, d11 uh, and d14 alone uh, exist uh, exists for uh, the uh, uh, this thing i really did not expand anything so for example the mn is uh, up generated charge coulomb per applied force newton so this is coulomb per newton and uh, uh, normally the thing is it's given in terms of uh, per unit area so we add coulomb per meter square by meter uh, newton per meter square right um, okay. Now, there is another coefficient called generated coefficient. We have the EMN. Uh, this M and N uh, uh, for the uh, direction, right? So, we simply uh, uh, divide uh, Q uh, D by uh, the relative the permeability of permittivity of the crystal we get the generated coefficient so this is normally given in uh, voltage per meter divided by Newton per meter square right so <coughs> so this is the generated voltage that you will get uh, then you also have H coefficient, H M. Please remember, all these are only in one direction. The uh, right. So we uh, put the H coefficient as the voltage generated uh, for an applied uh, uh, deflection, voltage per meter by meter per meter. So this is epsilon strain so how much voltage i get uh, with respect to uh, then there is also known as uh, the efficiency coefficient or uh, uh, converter energy converter efficiency coefficient so we calculate this as uh, this is again kmn so this is dmn into hmn square root so this depends on the efficiency uh, the piezoelectric phenomena is reversible which means if i apply a voltage i will create a compression or expansion of the crystal uh, so sometimes this is used for uh, uh, generating displacements or generating uh, even sound uh, for example uh, the uh, uh, a 
alarm that you have in your uh, alarm clock. Uh, many times it's made of uh, piezoelectric uh, <coughs> uh, device, uh, right? And uh, the the uh, uh, basically, uh, if I uh, look at uh, piezoelectricity, is a very useful. <coughs> Uh, transducer and uh, we use uh, the piezoelectricity uh, not only uh, in terms of uh, uh, transduction uh, for measuring pressure, uh, displacement, uh, acceleration, velocity uh, and so on but we also use it as I said in different forms uh, as crystal oscillators or <coughs> as a gas lighter right uh, and even uh, producing sound uh, in that uh, the only <coughs> uh, thing that we should uh, keep it in mind is I talked about the equivalent circuit uh, as a simple LM uh, RM and CM right uh, but if I make a mechanical device let's assume that the device is uh, uh, even made into uh, a square cube right uh, there is no way i can restrict it to uh, uh, change dimensions only in a particular way uh, i have to restrain it and uh, then i can change it so if i generally allow it to change the uh, uh, compression expansion on its own then it's possible to do it on several modes. The, of course, the fundamental mode is the volume shrinks and volume expands. The second is uh, only the thickness shrinks, uh, shrinks and thickness expands, uh, or it uh, shears, or it can even twist, right? So if I make a slender type of uh, trans, transducer, I can twist it. Uh, so there are several modes. This uh, deformation can take place so hence uh, when I talk about uh, the this particular resonant frequency the resonant frequency depends upon the mode in which the uh, crystal uh, displacements take place so it could be fundamental mode which is the normal straightforward uh, expansion and contraction it could be uh, shear mode it could be uh, twisting mode uh, any type of mode is uh, possible so uh, especially when we want uh, crystal oscillators uh, with, high, with high frequencies we do not use the fundamental mode we may use the second order mode or the fifth order mode or sixth order mode uh, to get let's say something like uh, uh, 3.6 gigahertz uh, many times we don't even get uh, 3.6 gigahertz we may oscillate it at 1.8 gigahertz and use a frequency doubler to get uh, 3.6 uh, gigahertz. Uh, so we uh, learnt about uh, the uh, piezoelectric transducer. Uh, there are uh, natural materials like uh, quartz, uh, thermolin, uh, which exhibit piezoelectricity. But today, we most of the piezoelectric transducers are man-made either Rochelle salt or uh, barium titanate, uh, lead zirconate. These are all examples of uh, uh, different types of uh, piezoelectric uh, material. Thank you.